Hi everybody, welcome to our short revision webinar for AS Macro looking at external influences on the British macro economy. Britain is well described as an open economy. We trade a lot. Uh, if you add together the value of our exports of goods and services and the value of our imports, that's nearly two thirds of our GDP. It's a big part of our economy is export and importing. We have about 3% of world trade, uh, although we do better in services than we do in goods. We have very open capital markets. We don't have capital controls. Britain has a very open market, some big trading in currencies, in bonds, in equities, in derivatives. So we have a huge financial service sector. Uh, we, have, we have a floating exchange rate. The pound has floated against the dollar, against the euro, against the renminbi since 1992. And we are still a member of the European Union, pending the Brexit referendum on the 23rd of June. If you're watching this revision presentation after the 23rd of June, what happened? What happened? Now, the key point about this revision webinar is just to think a little bit about some of the external influences on the economy. I'm not going to cover everything in this session, but be aware, it's a great contextual point, that the British economy is not an island, although technically it is, but we're open to and susceptible to the economic effects in other countries. We call these external influences. Some of them come as a bit of a surprise, hence they're called external shocks. They can affect aggregate demand, they can affect aggregate supply, they can affect both aggregate demand and supply. So for example, global commodity prices, uh, the price of copper and zinc, rubber, cocoa, inflation rates in trading partners. So for example, a deflation at the moment in many European Union countries is going to affect the UK. So too does the economic cycles of our leading trading partners, be it Europe, be it United States, uh, Far East Asia. We're imp impacted by changes in interest rates and other policy decisions by the central banks around the world. We're certainly affected by the ebbs and flows of global commodity, uh, equity and bond prices. And then we have those kind of longer term shifts, the long term movements in competitiveness, the kind of big tectonic shifts in the, sh the pattern of trade, the emergence of new low cost centers of manufacturing, the, 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 the changing sounds of globalization are huge external influences, not just on the economy as a whole, but our individual lives and the businesses and the communities and the organizations we're involved with. In other words, capture in an essence for me this slide, the British economy is open to a large number of external influences. And as a result, it's quite hard to predict where the next, the next stage in the economic cycle will be. This is the latest forecast from the Bank of England on growth in the economy. The, the darker the green shade, the more likely is their forecast. And their forecasting, you can see growth are dipping a little bit in 2016, uh, and then the downside risk to growth, uh, and then growth may be picking up a bit 2017, 2018. Of course, the biggest downside risk to growth, according to the Bank of England at the moment, is not an external influence, it's the Brexit vote on the 23rd. Um, so a softening of growth, but, uh, and indeed, the range of growth, it could, we could be nearly 5% GDP growth, we could be down below zero. It's more likely to be between 1% and 3%, I think. Likewise, with inflation, see here that the Bank of England is forecasting that inflation will pick up back towards the 2% um, target over the next two to three years. Uh, it could stay very low, it could dip below zero, we could have some deflation. On the other hand, we could have inflation of 3-4%. So much depends on global external factors. But the Bank of England thinks that the recession risk is receding, but the inflation risk is possibly picking up. Well, one of the external factors, of course, is the currency. And uh, overall, in the UK, the pound, or sterling, as it's called, has been depreciating as a currency over the last six to nine months. Picked up a little bit since February, but basically the currency has been weakening. In fact, it's down nearly 10% on the last uh, 12, 12 months or so. So what kind of uh, effect does the depreciating currency have on the UK? For each of these little things, I've got a little slide and table here, which you can maybe print off as part of your revision notes. You know, uh, think about the external influence and think about what, what are the consequences for inflation, growth, jobs, trade, etc. You can't go wrong if you stick to the key macro objectives. So a falling pound, well in theory, probably cause a bit more inflation because imports become more expensive. Um, growth rates, well a falling pound in theory should be expansionary for growth, it's equivalent to a fall in interest rates 
in particular if exports uh, pick up nicely on the back of it. Again, a competitive currency should help to create uh, extra production, maybe a multiplier effect can kick in from the export industries and hopefully some new jobs created. Uh, what about the balance of trade? Well, we're not sure what the balance of trade is. It depends on the elasticity of demand. In theory, providing the elasticity is sufficiently strong, then a fall in the currency should help to improve our balance of trade. But it depends on the elasticity. It also depends on what's happening to demand in our key export markets, in particular, the European Union. In theory, a falling pound should help to improve profitability. It increases the overseas earnings of UK companies in dollars and euros when they take it back into pounds. Uh, but equally, the falling pound is good news for exporters, but it's going to cost more to import technology and more to import things like food and raw materials. So a falling exchange rate has costs and benefits on the macro side. Uh, the backstory here, of course, is Britain has a big current account deficit going into the macro paper in 2016. The deficit on the current account in the first quarter of 2016 was over 6% of our national output. That's the highest trade and, sorry, trade and current account deficit the UK has had for many a long year, certainly as long as I've been alive, and that's a long time. I think this is a really important one. So global commodity prices are you know, a key external factor affecting the UK. And uh, actually since 2014, as you know, if you've been following the oil market, Global commodity prices have been falling quite sharply. Oil is down by more than 50%, and even things like metal prices are down by 20%. Again, what's the consequences? Well, in theory, global commodity prices should help keep inflation down in the UK. Uh, you know, cheaper costs for businesses, no pressure on the bank to raise interest rates if there's no inflation. It should be good for growth. And if the price of oil goes down, it's like equivalent to a consumer of a tax cut. It should help bring unemployment down. But some industries negatively affected, oil and gas in the North Sea badly affected. The steel industry, of course, badly affected by the collapsing price of steel. Our trade balance, well, it depends. We import lots of commodities, so they're cheaper. Good news for our trade balance. But on the other hand, we're getting less per barrel of oil we sell. And actually, uh, the oil-dependent countries, um, like UAE and things and Saudi Arabia, their countries will slow down as a result and we'll sell less exports to them. In theory, global price, commodity prices falling is good news for businesses in the UK who import commodities, but bad news for British oil companies, and actually not very good news for renewable producers. Um, there's a kind of wider impact that lower commodity prices tend to reduce world growth, uh, less growth in commodity exporting countries. Uh, Sub-Saharan African countries being hit pretty hard at the moment. And uh, even a little quirky thing, the mining boom in Australia is coming to an end. Will we see the return of thousands of expats? Uh, there's, a, there's almost like a new TV series there, isn't it? You know? um, back from down under, maybe. Crucial thing, I think, is to think about some of the ways you can use the, the analysis. Um, this little diagram shows the effect of falling commodity prices. In theory, it increases aggregate supply because costs are lower. And I'm suggesting that it also boosts or increases aggregate demand, maybe not to the same extent. So you can just start to put into your model, into your analysis diagrams, the effect on GDP and inflation. Growth rates are matter. So the growth rates in other countries really do matter. You know, this is an external influence. Uh, by the way, the stuff in brackets here is just the share of UK exports to various countries. So for example, 4% of our exports go to China, only 2% to India about 40% to the euro area. Now, the key thing here is to think about growth. So growth is slowing down in countries like China. Growth is pretty weak already in the euro area. So a slowdown in growth in China, in the European area, would, have, would be an external influence on the British economy. Let's take as our final example, China. China is slowing down. As you can see, a dramatic slowdown from 7.4% to 6.7% staggering but it's a big economy and it's clearly slowing down what are some of the consequences well um it's a big deflationary shock for the global economy so china is clearly the world's second biggest economy by some measures the biggest economy in the world uh, it's a huge trade trading nation of course so if china slows down what, what's the consequence for the uk well inflation should be lower because the chinese slowdown brings down world commodity prices and also you know actually although sterling may actually 
be falling as well, which will offset that. Uh, weaker China probably, probably weakens growth in the UK. We'll be selling less exports to China. But of course, uh, we only sell 4% of our exports to China. And uh, the Bank of England, of course, may not have scope to cut interest rates if China weakens any, any further. Jobs, well, if you've been following the steel industry debate, of course, the Chinese slowdown associated with allegations of dumping by the Chinese of their excess steel. So clearly already jobs been affected in the UK. Is a Chinese slowdown good for the UK trade balance? Uncertain. China's currency is devaluing, which will help Chinese exports. Uh, we, are, we certainly benefit from cheaper commodity prices. We're a net importer. Um, but on the other hand, maybe fewer Chinese tourists and students coming to the UK, which is a big source of, of pounds and dollars and things. And then you kind of think of the bigger, wider effects. So if the Chinese economy slows down and triggers another debt crisis, you know, another big short moment, for example, then that could bring down world stock markets, could get very fragile. And if world stock markets fall, then does that cause a fall in consumer and business confidence and maybe a weaker UK economy? Actually, our exposure to China is pretty small, particularly in the pension fund, less than 1% of pension assets are actually invested in Chinese shares and bonds. That's less of a concern than maybe the bigger, wider effects of a slowdown in China on the world economy. But undoubtedly, a Chinese slowdown would be an external influence affecting the British economy. OK, so we've looked at three examples. We've looked at China, we've looked at commodity prices, and we've looked at a falling currency. These are three examples of external influences on the macro economy. Thanks for joining in. See you again soon.